Hi, my name is Jaime Lopez and I'm a second year MCP student at UC Berkeley. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person today, but I made this video to share a little bit about the work that I did in Chile this summer. We'll begin with a big picture, talking about what sustainable development is. We'll then talk about the Inter-American Development Bank and the work it's been doing to measure sustainable development in Latin America specifically. And we'll then finish with a brief discussion about the country of Chile, the Male region, and the city of Talca in particular. So sustainable development, what is it? The most common definition that you'll come across is that it's, it's referring to development that meets the needs of the present generation without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own. Sounds simple enough, however, it's actually quite complex and it encompasses a wide range of topics and issues. So why is sustainable development important um, in general? Currently, over a thousand governments around the world are, develop, are in the process of developing policy related to sustainability, developing sustainable practices. In fact, there's great lack of coordination um, from the global community focusing on sustainable development as it is. Unlike the World Health Organization, which for the medical field, for the health sector, sets definitions and parameters for certain things, there is no such entity when it comes to sustainable development in a global context. So why is Latin America important? The Inter-American Development Bank recognized that, the, that Latin America is the second fastest urbanized region in the world. Out of this entire continent, we have 242 cities that are considered intermediate-sized cities. And these cities are expected to have 90% of the population in the next 20 years. So let's talk a little bit about urbanization rate in Latin America, and let's go on a little bit further in the discussion here. So when we think about urbanization rate in Latin America, let's think about 1950, the year when, when Latin America was urbanizing at a rate of 41%. Then let's fast forward to the year 2010, when that rate grew to 79%. 20 years from now, as I mentioned earlier, 90% of the population in Latin America will live in cities. Now, why does the, does the inner development, does the Inter-American Development Bank care about designing a methodology to measure how sustainable these cities are? Well, some of the objectives are the following. They're looking to basically achieve environmental, urban, fiscal, uh, and fiscal sustainability. Now, when they're thinking about um, why that's important, think about the fact that these intermediate-sized cities in Latin America are responsible for 30% of the GDP of the continent, which um, poses the greatest challenge to the continuous growth and development of the continent. Um, there's also a, the factor of political versus fiscal decentralization, which we must discuss when talking about this issue. Um, historically, political decentralization, at least in recent history, has been progressing at a certain rate. However, fiscal decentralization has been lagging behind. We'll get to that a little bit later, but I just want to point out the fact that in a country like Chile, for example, where political decentralization has occurred since the fall of the, of the dictatorship in 1990, fiscal decentralization has been much slower to come by and has left a good part of the country underfunded, under-resourced, and is a great challenge towards uh, sustainable, sustainable development in the future. So, the Inter-American the Inter Development Bank created uh, this methodology, and here are some of the ob objectives. So, among the objectives are preventing challenges from limiting future development. Uh, they want to convert this methodology into a public good so that cities around Latin America are able to take that methodology and measure the status of their sustain sustainable, sustainable efforts. Um, and it's also designed in such a way where it takes into account integrated and interdisciplinary um, factors. Uh, so how does the Inter-American Development Bank implement this methodology? First and foremost, I should mention that it encompasses three dimensions. One of those dimensions is environmental and climate change issues. Another dimension is urban development. And a third uh, dimension is fiscal and governability. So these are three broad dimensions under which there are a vast number of indicators 
that look at um, a variety of things. Total, there are about 147 indicators, um, and we'll get to what those mean and, and how they um, impact um, the results. So we begin with a diagnosis stage. The first stage of implementing the methodology is to basically collect data. And this is done by doing quantitative uh, data collection um, with a total of 120 indicators. We look at technical and qualitative analysis, and we look at baseline studies. This process takes one year. And after that one year, you have a baseline of the results that you're then gonna take into the prioriz prioritization stage, which allows you then to look at all of the data you've collected and be able to assess where the most urgent needs are. How do we do this? Um, you take the scores from the first stage and you run them through filters to ensure more accuracy with uh, the scores that you're getting. So basically you have um, a public opinion filter, an economics filter, a multi-sectorality filter, and a climate change filter, which is basically some additional quantitative um, work that is done, measurements. So once all of the results from the first stage are done and they're run through these filters. You then end up with all of the indicators for the methodology having a score between one and five. Five being an indicator that would uh, represent a high urgency. So this allows any city to focus on its most pressing needs. Obviously, when you have so many indicators, you can't tackle all of the problems all at once. So the way that the methodology is designed is to get all the data and then figure out what's most uh, pressing and then be able to take action. Which leads us to the third stage, which is the action plan stage, which takes three to four years uh, and then is followed by a monitoring stage, which then follows what is implemented. Um, it's iterative, lessons are learned along the way, and it continues monitoring um, the different set of indicators that are being um, that are being faced. Um, so how does a city get the attention of the Inter-American Development Bank to implement such a methodology in its own city? First, you have to apply. You have to submit an application. You have to also get the approval of local and national counterparts. And you have to, of course, get the approval eventually of the national government. So when I was in Chile, I was there for a little more than two months. The first couple of weeks I spent uh, basically having ongoing discussions about what sustainable development really was. And after doing that, we started looking at methodologies for a couple of weeks, methodologies around the world. Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so we wanted to find a methodology that would be most appropriate for an intermediate sized city in Chile um, and specifically in the Mali region. Um, when we came across the Inter-American Development Bank's methodology, it was a logical conclusion to most pursue that methodology because they, A, already had a methodology in place, um, they had already implemented it in 50 cities around Latin America, in intermediate-sized cities, and they had, done th they had implemented it in three cities in Chile um, up to date. Um, so we then focused um, on understanding the logic behind the methodology, understanding the different stages, uh, understanding its objectives, uh, and then we wanted to better understand how we would be able to make a strong case for having that methodology implemented in the city, like uh, in, in a city in the city of Talca. So, uh, towards the end of my time in Chile, I was able to land an interview. Um, a, a one-hour discussion with two representatives from the Inter-American Development Bank who I was able to talk to about the work that we were doing in Talca, uh, why the Ministry of Housing and Urbanism was interested in having such a methodology implemented there. Uh, and then we also tried during that meeting to understand um, what they would need from us to be able to take that city into account for future study. So now that I've talked a little bit about just sort of a broad uh, look at um, the methodology that I was looking at and um, the efforts to try to have 
this methodology implemented in the Mala region and in Talca. Let's talk a little more about the Mala region and Talca. So, uh, I'd like to give you a little bit more socioeconomic and political context about some of the issues that I then also had to learn. So I should mention that while I was studying this methodology, um, I was also gaining a lot of local context, a lot of uh, knowledge about the politics, the socioeconomic conditions, um, the environmental issues, um, and I was doing this mostly by interviewing academics, people in the government, people in organizations, uh, community organizations, some of which, uh, some, of, some of who had missions counter to what the government is currently doing. Um, and this gave me a comprehensive understanding about, about uh, what uh, the status was um, uh, in a lot of respects for this region and better to be able to better talk about it um, eventually with the Inter-American Development Bank. So a little, to share with you a little bit about some of the things that I learned and, and have been discussing ever since. Um, so the Mala region is a pop, has a population of over a million people. Uh, this is the fourth largest region in the country. So I should also mention, just in case you may not be aware, um, Chile refers to regions the way we refer to states. So there are 12 regions in Chile. The Mali region is considered the seventh region. It is more or less in the middle of the country. It's, it's their Central Valley. So similar to California Central Valley, it's a very significant agricultural uh, region in the country. Um, so the Mali region has four provincias, which are Talca, Linares, Curicó, and Cauquenes. Uh, Talca is the capital of the region, the city of Talca. Um, and one thing I want to share to sort of just expand on, on our discussion about the city of Talca and the Mala region is that recently there was an article that talked about Talca being one of the three worst provincias to live in in the entire state of Chile, in the entire country of Chile. Two of the reasons given were the poverty rate and the environmental conditions. So when talking about the uh, poverty rate, we know that the Mala region has a poverty rate of 16%, which makes it a poverty rate higher than the national average. And when talking about the environmental conditions, we're mainly talking about emissions due to traffic congestion and to the burning of coal uh, for heating purposes. Um, and as a quick segue, having uh, shared with you that article and two of these major factors, uh, during my time in Talca, I made it a point to, in my free time, talk to people of all walks of life, academics, um, people who work in the government, um, you know, and, and just citizens and immigrants out on the street. And I would ask them, what are the advantages to living in Talca and what are the disadvantages? And I found that most people who I asked the, the question of what are the advantages uh, in, in, of living in Talca are, uh, would mention quality of life. They would talk about the short distance between home and work, which also gave them the ability to spend more time with their family, less time in traffic. They talked about um, because Talca is not a huge city, uh, you know, there's more emphasis on neighborhood and there's a stronger sense of belonging there. Uh, they also talked about low crime, which I personally witnessed as well. Um, one can walk around Talca and not worry about things that you might worry about in a larger city like Santiago, for instance. Um, and then when asking people about the disadvantages of living in Talca, the two most common answers were a lack of cultural opportunities and lack of employment opportunities. Um, so I just wanted to give you that quick segue um, and you know, sort of related to this article um, where we're talking about poverty rate and environmental conditions in the region. So when we talk about the Mala region, we also, um, thanks to an interview that I had with a local professor there, um, we found that the Mala region is, is among the three worst also in average annual uh, salary. Um, most of this has to do with the fact that it is a strong agricultural um, sector. So the fact that it's agricultural um, has serious implications for various things uh, various parts of aspects of society there. Uh, number one, it results in unstable, unemploy uh, unstable employment. 
Um, so you have a lot of migra migratory work where you have people seasonally moving from one place to another. Uh, many of these people work as subcontractors with uh, no rights. Um, and you can imagine that they basically uh, have a very unstable um, employment, uh, employment conditions. Um, there's a huge gender inequality as well, that also being related to the agricultural presence in, in the region. Um, the opportunity for uh, women in the employment sector are very limited, and even within agriculture, the positions that are available to them are often um, difficult and very vulnerable. Um, educational inequality is also, um, it, it is one of the regions suffering the most from this uh, in the country. And also, this brings us to our last point here, child labor. I found that the average age for a child to get involved in labor in the Mala region is 12.6 years of age. Um, with parent permission, any kid between the age of 12 to 14 can work. Many of these kids work in food processing, food packaging, supermarkets, um, which also has implications for the educational attainment of children in the region, um, which is also a segment of the overall sustainable uh, sustainability measures that the methodology looks at. Um, one of the components um, is education. So, um, so then let's take a step back and talk about challenges to sustainability uh, in sustainable development in Chile, but also much of this very relevant to the continent as a whole. Um, the first, specifically Chile, um, that I found very interesting and was something that was shared by uh, various professors who I spoke to is the depoliticized citizenry uh, post-dictatorship that exists in Chile. Um, there is this fear, this sense of um, fear that many people have when it comes to challenging or questioning authority um, due to their experience with, with dictatorship in the past, um, which uh, one example of that um, that I was given was uh, there's an organization that looks at the participation of unions um, in the country in the past 30 years. Um, and there's been a constant decrease in participation in unions and the thinking is that people just don't want to risk um, their well-being, their opportunities by challenging authority um, and again some of this is psychologically perhaps tied to uh, having experienced the dictatorship in this country which presents a challenge going forward um, if, if the citizenry there is expected to, um, to challenge what is currently being done um, at the political level and definitely in terms of sustainable development and, and related issues. Um, another major challenge is data, the accuracy of the data. The last census uh, provided some very unreliable data there were technical uh, failures that occurred and this presents a huge problem going forward obviously for planning for long-term vision um, without being uh, properly equipped with data that is reliable. Um, so lack of long-term planning, something that is relatively not very uh, existent in Chile. Um, in the Mala region in general, um, there is the Plan Regional de Ordenamiento Territorial, which is a document that was released in 2014 that provides, it's the closest document that exists to having some kind of um, plan for how development should occur. Uh, prior to 2014, the previous document was released in the 1970s, just to give you an idea of the lack of consistency there. Um, and fiscal decentralization, as we mentioned earlier, is a huge problem, not just in Chile, but in, um, but, but in Latin America in general. Um, as countries become politically decentralized, a lot of times fiscal decentralization doesn't uh, keep pace with that. So you end up with areas outside of the capital city 
being significantly under-resourced, underfunded. In fact, in talking to various people from all walks of life in Chile, many of them um, repeated a phrase that um, I came to see was very common, and it was people basically saying to me, Santiago is Chile, um, as if to say only Santiago matters, only important things happen, only the important things happen in Santiago, um, or I should say all things that are important happen in Santiago, um, leaving the rest of the country neglected, overlooked, and um, feeling under-resourced. So fiscal decentralization is another challenge as well as sustainability development um, projects or programs are pursued in the future. Uh, there has to be a more equal distribution of resources and funding to make that happen, which is why the Inter-American Development Bank has um, taken interest in measuring um, sustainable development because or specifically measuring fiscal and governability issues because it wants to ensure that uh, these intermediate sized cities around the con continent are getting properly resourced, properly funded, um, since what happens there is critical. As we mentioned earlier, it does at the moment represent 30% of the GDP of the continent, so these cities cannot be overlooked. Um, so. Hopefully I've given you a general sense of the methodology whose logic I was trying to understand, the objectives I was trying to understand with the Inter-American Development Bank. Towards the end of my time in Chile, uh, I was able to have a one hour um, uh, discussion with two representatives from the Inter-American Development Bank who um, I was able to share with um, the things that I had learned about the Mala region and the city of Talca to make a case for why they should consider that region uh, for future work. And I was able to better understand how they made their decisions. Um, and these are ongoing discussions. I have um, more Skype calls in the coming weeks with people from the bank to better understand um, what the city of Talca, for example, should do to be able to uh, have their methodology implemented there. So going forward, to give you an idea of some of the people that I hope to interview as well, um, I'm interviewing a transportation expert in the region who works at the Centro de Estudios uh, Urbano Territoriales, um, continuing, as I mentioned, uh, conversations with the Inter-American Development Bank. Um, I'm also interviewing Salvador Rueda, who is the man behind the Superblock idea in Barcelona. He's currently the director of the Agencia de la Ecología Urbana de Barcelona. Um, I'm also looking to interview in recent weeks, in, in coming weeks, uh, the leadership, leadership Council, which is an organization in Central California, which deals with a wide range of community issues, but also looks at sustainable development. Um, and with them, I'm interested in kind of adding a little bit more um, of a comparison, comparative analysis of uh, what is being being done in a different political context about the same issues. Um, and then finally, I'm continuing discussions that I've had with a PhD student currently at the University of Albany who is looking at educational inequality in Chile, but also in, in other Latin American countries. Um, he was someone who I was advised I should speak to, and um, I've had uh, conversations with him and will continue to talk to him about Chile's uh, uh, educational uh, inequalities. So again, I hope I've given you a good sense of the work I was doing, um, a good idea about what are some of the major issues in the Maule region, city of Talca, um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue having these discussions in person. Um, again, I really wish I was there, so um, I look forward to um, working with you in the future, and thank you again for your time today.